It's no surprise that most pro athletes play for the game for the sake of winning a championship at some point in their career. The same ideology is shared among the fans that debate the game and rank players alike. A ring, it's seen as the pinnacle of the sport and a relatively easy way to separate the legends from the greats and the greats from the good and the good from the above average. Have we gone too far in the depths of ring culture to the point where it holds too much weight in arguments on who ranks where though? Players explain all the time about how hard it is to truly win a title and that even if you make it to the finals one year that could very well be your last year ever making it there the diehard basketball fan they understand that a ring doesn't solely determine whether you were a great player or not or how successful your career was guys like ewing reggie miller barkley they're all talked about as legends, as greats in their time, but somehow they always fall short. They seem to miss a tier and be a tier below the greats of their era. And most of it, it comes down to them not winning a ring. Well, first of all, what is ring culture? Cause we hear this term thrown around a lot around NBA circles and a lot of people don't even know what it is or how to define it. Now simply put in my layman's terms, ring culture is the NBA social ideal that in order to be considered one one of the best of the best in the league, you need to have had won a ring and in some extremist ideology, you need to win multiple rings. While at face value, this doesn't sound too bad and it kind of makes sense because again, they play to win the game. The definition gets much deeper with each person and with each subjective definition that everybody has. For instance, it can stay short and to the point like I defined it in the beginning or with other people's, it can go so deep that you're adding nuances like this person has to win a ring while being the bus driver or this person has to win the ring while leaving this team in this category wherever the criteria is ever growing and it seems to grow with the imagination of basketball's fan base from year to year the problem that comes with ring culture is not the fact that it requires a player to win a championship to be great we understand that winning a championship that comes with being great but rather the fact that ring culture it hasn't really evolved with basketball when you think about ring culture and its inception more often than not you think about the LeBron arguments versus Kobe, the Kobe arguments versus Jordan, at least for me, that's when that began. That's when I first started hearing about what player won what ring and how many of them they won. First, it was Kobe chasing Jordan six. He got short and hit five. Then it was LeBron chasing Kobe's five. Now, the reason it was easier to use this as a comparison was because Let's face it, back then in the 2000s, the 90s, the 80s, it was a lot easier to lead a team to a championship with one or two players. You didn't need three, four, five stars and a healthy bench behind you to help facilitate a ring the way you do now. The reason it was easier to compare championships amongst players was for that reason. Teams were often carried by one or two players and in the best cases, three players like the Bulls or the 2000 Lakers and even the 2000 Spurs. That was the blueprint to winning back then. You get a duo or a trio and then you round the team off with guys that complement that duo or trio to the maximum amount that you can complement them. In today's NBA, the players, they're so talented that even that eighth guy on the bench, he is such an integral part to a team's championship hopes that the eighth guy on the bench way back then, he didn't really get looks on the floor at all, not even in the regular season. For example, the eight, nine, and 10 guys on the 2000 Lakers, it was Tyron Lou, Rick Fox, and Brian Shaw. These weren't guys that were heavily, heavily contributing to that 3 P. whereas now the guys that are that 9, 10, 11 spot on the bench, they're providing healthy contributions to championship teams. If you look at the Warriors, they're 9, 10, 11 guys. That was Andre Iguodala, Gary Payton II, and Jonathan Kaminga. Now, Jonathan Kaminga didn't play the best in the finals, but he was integral to that. Gary Payton II, he was integral, which is why they brought him back. And Andre Iguodala, he has championship pedigree. You can't argue with that. Bringing up a player having no rings like a Damian Lillard, who is, he's undeniably great and the third best shooter of all time, it automatically makes that argument disingenuous and it causes it to lose legs because we know the context surrounding is that 
Dame hasn't had the team around him to even compete at that level. While you could possibly say the same for the older eras, it was much easier to bring something up like this then because teams were not as good as they were top to bottom in each conference. So if you were on one of the better teams in the conference, you were often one of the four that was more than likely making the conference finals. In today's NBA, regardless of play-in, today we're seeing teams separated by one or two games all the way down from the fourth seed to the 11th seed, and it could change the whole playoff picture in the midst of three games. As basketball fans, we love to see the game evolving, but we we do need to evolve with the game, the way we watch, the way we learn, and the way we analyze. The game has become more team-oriented since the Warriors dynasty began. They showed us that you can have a superstar and other star-like players around him that basically exemplify his talents to the best of their ability and win some championships, and that's essentially what the Warriors were able to do. Now, granted, they did get KD, so that was a bit of a cheat code in the midst of that, but they did win without KD and they won before and after him. It goes without saying, most, if not all of these players play to win. However, we also have to realize that a ring does not define whether or not a player had a successful career. Obviously, there are players like LeBron, Steph, Giannis, KD, you know, megastars that we expect to win a few rings. But the truth is, the vast majority of players, they're just not going to win a ring. And in fact, the odds are against most players to win a ring ever in their career. At the end of the day, if you know basketball, understand how to watch basketball, and know how to interpret statistics properly in a way that supports argument, hardware shouldn't really need to come into question unless the statistical output from both players mirrors or the resume as a whole is just too similar. Rings are only a bad determination of greatness when it is solely used without numbers and resume to back it up. Simply put, rings should act as a boost to your resume and not an individual evaluator. Ring culture is neither good nor bad when used responsibly. And the beautiful thing about it being a culture, it's the fact that it can be built and destroyed through basketball conversation and we can actively change the narrative behind it. Now, sadly, with the way social media accounts run and search for interaction, this is going to be a hard narrative to shift. It's going to start with us, people like me that are making videos like this. More often than not, the people that follow these major accounts, they're usual casuals. And casuals, 9 times out of 10, they follow what they see and hear the most when it comes to basketball conversation. If they're following this guy, they're normally taking his word as law, which is part of the reason a lot of us got on Kendrick Perkins for calling Nikola Jokic a stat pattern. He's not that. This is the reason why we can't have certain narratives just thrown out there because casuals will latch onto it and try to use that as an anchor for their basketball debates. Like I said, most times it's casuals that follow these major, major analysts and people that talk about the game. And if you know anything about casuals versus diehards, whether it's video games, sports, whatever, it's that there's always the silent minority who is led by the loud majority. And the majority is commonly casuals. We're seeing it in games like Call of Duty right now. Call of Duty, they're catering to the casuals when the diehards don't want what the game is doing. But guess what? There's more casuals. So to them, that's the majority and that's what the majority wants. Now the question is, will ring culture ever change? Maybe not in a public social setting, but when we get to talking ball with other like-minded individuals, ring culture, I don't think it's ever really been much of an issue, at least for me. The bottom line is that rings should not hold more weight than other accolades as it primarily depends depends on your team's strength, luck, and some things just falling into place at the right time. Accolades such as MVPs, DPOYs, and other year-end awards, they're clear indicators that a player was better than their peers for X amount of years, X amount of times. When you have direct comparisons like yearly awards and all NBA nominations, rings don't really need to come into play unless those personal awards are similar among two players. Overall, we need to do better when we're debating the greats. You have guys like Robert Ori, who has seven rings. If you're going to be one of those people that says rings reign supreme and that's the number one identifier, 
then you're going to have a tough time justifying Robert Ori being in your top five. Because if he's not in your top five, then your argument completely loses ground and you have nothing else that you can really stand on anymore. That's all I got for you guys in this video. I just wanted to talk about ring culture a little bit, especially after Dame talked about how much he dislikes it, how much he pretty much gets shitted on for not winning a ring when we all know he's one of the best point guards in the league. He's the second best shooter ever to touch a basketball. Yeah, it, it is nasty. Ring culture can get disgusting, but when we're talking to real hoop heads, real hoop purists like yourself, you don't got to bring up rings or nothing like that. But that's all I got for you guys in this one. It's your boy TB, greatest hoop stories in based on the tube. And as always, I love you guys, and I'm out. Peace.